Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. It's time to talk about Maxwell. NVIDIA is launching two new graphics cards today, the GTX 980 and the GTX 970. Now chances are, if you read the internet, if you read PCPro.com, you've probably seen tons of rumors about what the specifications are, what the performance is, and chances are, most of that was probably pretty accurate. Uh, but we're gonna tell you about what actually uh, the architectural changes are, feature changes, the new cards, performance levels, power consumption, and, and it's all actually pretty impressive stuff. First, uh, you can see we've got these three cards out in front of us. We actually have one uh, GTX 980 as well as two retail GTX 970s, one from EVGA and one from MSI. We'll have reviews of all these retail cards coming up relatively soon. Um, the Maxwell architecture that is used in this new GPU is very, very similar to what was released uh, with the GTX 750 Ti earlier this year. Uh, that was GM107 was the code name for this GPU. And the code name for uh, the current one that's releasing today is actually GM204. So it's the bigger brother uh, with some additional features and obviously quite a bit more shaders and uh, horsepower from it. Um, the, the Basic structure is the same though, right? You have uh, GPCs, GPU compute clusters, you have SMs, simultaneous multi-threaded devices, right, that are collections of CUDA cores. In this case, we have 128 core uh, SMs instead of 192 core SMs that existed in the Kepler architecture. Uh, and basically what NVIDIA and its team has done is found ways to drastically improve power and area efficiency with Maxwell that they weren't able to do with Kepler. Now the result of that is not necessarily just raw performance improvements, but that they're able to get uh, run these GPUs at higher clock speeds, at lower voltages, and lower power consumption. So as you'll see is the performance of these new cards is actually pretty impressive, but it's not going to blow everything that's currently out there, you know, away, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll show, talk about that in our performance characteristics in a little, in a little bit. Feature-wise, uh, you know, they are adding a couple of interesting things. They have one uh, new anti-aliasing mode called MFAA which actually stands for multi-frame anti-aliasing, not what you probably initially thought. Uh, and that is kind of, it's sort of like temporal anti-aliasing in that it compares um, previous frames uh, basically in an image, right? It kind of merges them as it goes, but it's also varying the uh, aliasing points or varying the sample points on each pixel uh, progressively. It's kind of like a randomized uh, uh, sample point pattern. And the result of that is you get, you're supposed to get about 4x AA quality for about the cost of 2x AA. Now it's not enabled in the drivers they actually ship to us, so we really have no way to test that yet. Uh, so we'll take that at their word for the time being. They also are introducing something called uh, dynamic super resolution or DSR. And what that is, is again kind of another take or another way to access something similar to a super sample anti-aliasing. This is actually kind of cool in that you go into the, your NVIDIA control panel driver, you enable DSR, and in the game, when you start up, say, Skyrim, it will, instead of uh, just showing your actual panel's native resolution, say 1920 by 1080, it will actually offer you higher resolutions, up to 3840 by 2160. And what it does is the game actually renders at 3840 by 2160, and then a filter, I think it's a 13-tap uh, Gaussian filter from NVIDIA, in real time, samples it down back into a 1080p image. You know, the, the way they're advertising this feature is that users that have 1080p monitors but still have more powerful graphics cards and games that don't really have any other way to utilize that compute power, you can simply render at higher resolutions and get better image quality out of it. And in my testing, in a, in a couple of games at the very least, in the short time we had with these cards so far, it actually worked pretty well. For example, in Skyrim, uh, the foliage looked way better with uh, DSR running at 3840 by 2160 than the game ran at 19 by 10 with 8x MSAA enabled, right? So uh, you can check that out here or you can check out uh, more images and screenshots in our full article. Uh, they also have full support for the upcoming DX12 features. They also have a uh, new technology called VXGI, which is voxel-based global illumination. Uh, we're not gonna talk about that too much. It is more of a technology that game developers will be able to implement in the future to do global illumination at, at relatively high frame rates, which will be the first time for that, and there are acceleration features in the GPUs for that. They have VR Direct to accelerate, uh, you know, Oculus and other 3D technologies. There's a bunch of stuff in there, uh, but that's kind of like the main 
features that are launched with the new Maxwell, Big Maxwell as they call it, GM204. These are the first GPUs to have HDMI 2.0 support. Uh, that's actually pretty cool. And depending on the card you get, you actually get all kinds of different output configurations, including up to three full-size display ports as well. Now, we've got these cards here. NVIDIA sent GTX 980 reference cards. You can probably tell by looking at it. This is, I mean, this basically looks identical to what the GTX 780, 780 Ti, and uh, the Titan Black looked like. The, the cooler industrial design is essentially the same. What is new is on the back plate here, you've act, well, you have a back plate first of all, and then this actual portion right here comes off, and it's just pretty nice. If you've got cards that are side by side for SLI, it allows for additional airflow into the tarp, top cards cooler. Um, you've still got your SLI connections, and the fan is obviously still pretty much the same. If you look at output configurations, you've got a single DVI this time, and then as if on demand, support for three full-size DisplayPort connections and one HDMI 2.0 connection. So you could run three G-Sync monitors off of a single video card if you wanted to now. And I don't really know why that HDMI port is in the middle of those display ports, I, th there's got to be some reason for it, otherwise they wouldn't do it. But now you could run uh, any of these displays and TVs are going to come out soon that will do 4K 60 hertz at four at uh, full 444 color rates. Um, so, you know, maybe for some people, it's disappointing to only see a single DVI connection there if you have multiple monitors and uh, you're going to have to buy different adapters for that. Oh yeah, also worth pointing out, only two six-pin power connections. Right? This is an extremely power efficient GPU. If we look at the specs of the GTX 980, um, you're talking about a 165 watt TDP. 165 watts, that's actually extremely low. You've got four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory running at seven gigahertz. Your base clock is 1126 megahertz and your boost clock is 1262. Those are incredibly high clock rates, especially if you compare it to something like the GTX 780 Ti that was around 875 megahertz base clock. Those are really, really impressive specifications. Now the GTX 970s, we have two of them here. We have uh, an EVGA and we have an MSI card as well. They have slightly lower end specifications, obviously, as you would expect. You're talking about core counts at uh, 1664, uh, the same four gigabyte uh, uh, four gigabytes of memory running at seven gigahertz. You've got base clocks at 1050 megahertz with boost up to 1178 and a 145 watt TDP. So again, getting really down in there uh, in terms of what times of power consumption you need. Interestingly, the MSI card here does actually have a six pin and an eight pin power connection. So obviously overkill for that as well. Uh, both of these are based on the same GM204 GPU. We are promised that this is a full GM204 in the GTX 980. So there won't be some other part uh, that comes out with a slightly upgraded, you know, more shader counts, higher shader count, more SMs made available or anything like that. But the GTX 970 is that same GPU kind of toned down, pulled back a little bit with some of those SMs disabled to get you to that lower uh, CUDA core count. Uh, 5.2 billion transistors, 398 millimeters squared die size, if you happen to be interested in any of those specific uh, specifications, I guess, if you will. Now performance, we're going to talk about performance, power, and pricing. These are the most important things really for people looking to buy a new GPU. Let's mention pricing first because it will determine how our uh, performance comparisons get made. The retail price of the GTX 980 will be $549 for the reference models and obviously that will scale up a little bit as you get into the custom cooled overclocked options. The GTX 970 is going to be all the way down at $329 for the reference models. And again, for custom designs like this, you'll probably see $20, $30 uh, premium for those. Now, what does that do in terms of the pricing landscape? So at $549, the GTX 980 kind of becomes the new flagship gaming enthusiast card for NVIDIA. Compare that to the 780 Ti, currently selling for $599, although I expect that to uh, fall off as well. And AMD's Radeon R9 290X sells for about $489 to $499. So the GTX 980 is going to be more expensive than the 290X. Uh, and performance wise, that kind of pans out uh, as you would expect. 
The GTX 980 ranges anywhere from dead even with the 290X to about 15% faster, depending on the game. And we ran both all of our tests at 2560 by 1440 and uh, 4K. So if you want the full allotment of benchmarks and analysis, you should check out the full article. We don't want to show each and every one of them to you here. Uh, and then the GTX 980 versus the uh, NVIDIA's own GTX 780 Ti you're looking at essentially the same comparison. Uh, it is faster in every game that we tested, uh, except for Skyrim for some reason, which proved to be the case for the 970 as well. But in general, uh, I'd say across the board, the GTX 980 is faster than the 780 Ti and uh, faster than the 290X by up to 15% or so in our testing. GTX 970, $329. Its competition is the GTX 780, which is currently selling for 469 bucks, so $140 more expensive. And then AMD's Radeon R9 290, which sells for 379, so $50 more expensive. And as you would expect, based on uh, my lead into this, the GTX 970 is faster than those cards as well. You're talking about up to 15 to 20% faster than the R9 290, uh, depending on the game, and maybe five to 10% faster than the GTX 70, depending on the game as well. So that kind of puts it, you know, out, all out there, right? The, the GTX 970 is going to be a tremendous buy for budget gamers, or bu I'd say budget enthusiast gamers. Uh, it definitely looks like a an absolute win on the performance side. The GTX 980 is still a win. Uh, had they gone more aggressive with the pricing at 499, for example, this would have been, you know, an easy victory for NVIDIA on that side. As it is now, you know, because the 290X is going to be $50 or so less expensive, there's going to be some questions about, um, you know, what, what that performance is worth to each individual user. Now, we did do SLI scaling uh, as well. I'm not going to talk about it in the video. Go to the review at PCPro.com to check that out. What's maybe the most impressive part of this is the power consumption, though. And I feel like we don't usually harp on it too much, but it needs to be brought up here. The GTX 980 is able to outperform the 780 Ti and the 290X, as I just said. However, it is able to do so while using 130 watts less power under load than the, G than the R9 290X. 130 watts less power. And it's able to use 85 watts less power than NVIDIA's own GTX 780 Ti. That is a tremendous efficiency gain, right? You're, you're exceeding the performance in today's, you know, some of today's most, uh, most difficult games to render, Battlefield 4 and Crisis 3, and you're doing it with significantly less power, which means you can run quieter, you can run cooler, and depending on whatever custom designs that their board vendors come up with, that could be a significant, significant advantage for NVIDIA. The same is true with the GTX 970. It drew uh, 80 watts less power than the R9 290 and 55 watts less power than the GTX 780. And again, it exceeded the performance of both of those parts. Um, it is an, an impressive architectural feat um, that I do wish, again, that GTX 980 had come down maybe $50 more and it would have been a really, really super aggressive move on NVIDIA's part. They seem to make that super aggressive move with the 970, but not so much with the 980. We'll see how inventory scales out. But remember, these are all built on the same 28 nanometer process that the GTX 780 is built on, that the GTX 680 is made on. Uh, and NVIDIA's engineers deserve some credit for being able to pull this kind of performance and efficiency out of that existing kind of process technology and infrastructure. Uh, these cards will be available, I believe, starting uh, later this week. Uh, and again, it will depend on which of the retail boards you want to get. I think you'll only see the retail or the reference cards for the 980 at the uh, beginning of sales, but you'll see lots of custom 970s on the market as well. Uh, go to PCPro.com. I feel like this video is already pretty long, but the article goes into a tremendous amount of detail about the architecture, those features like uh, MFAA and DSR, and then tons of benchmarks of the individual GPUs, as well as uh, uh, the uh, discussion on SLI and power and efficiency and all of that. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Check out uh, that full review. It is at PCPro.com or it is linked in the video description below if you're watching it on YouTube. And expect more reviews of these 970, 980 retail cards as they become available. Thanks, guys.